Just make sure you can. Oh, do you like it? Yes, I like it. We'll see you later, Ada. Bye. Have fun. I thought you'd come to the back door. I don't like back doors. Sandy, mm. can we take a ride over the White River? I thought we were going to the shoreline. Yeah, I know that, but I, I've had sort of a rough day, and I don't think I can handle the racket in there right now. What do you say? Well, I say okay. Special? No. Come on. <laughs> Where are we going? I'm abducting you. Well, let me think about oh, it. Oh, no. You can't think on an empty stomach. OK, now, which one of the fabulous wonders of Peyton Place shall we visit tonight? Oh, I don't care. Oh, but you have to care. It's a lady's choice. Let's see. There's the, uh, well, there's the shoreline. There's Mamacito's. There's the Shangri-La. And of course, always the tried and true Colonial Inn with its fabulous New England cuisine. How much of that is kidding? Madam, I never kid. No, I mean about taking me to the inn. Were you really going to take me there? Like I said before, it's ladies' choice. Uh, but I look awful. Well, that's a matter of opinion. Well, at least let me change my clothes. No one will look at your clothes. It's so dark in there, you can't even read the menu. Despite the fact that his wife, Sandy, has filed for divorce, he's convinced she still belongs to him, but she is still private property. He knows that some months ago, Sandy and Rodney Harrington met while he sat in a jail cell. Now, Sandy is dating Rodney Harrington openly. The private property is no longer his. Good evening, Mr. Harrington. Good evening. Uh, two for dinner? I'll have a table for you in just a moment. Thank you. Clumsy of me. Wainwright and Kennelly? Mm, yes. Oh, uh, Kennelly has some very nice things to say about you. We did? Hm. We got to do quite a skirmish at the airport with this document. And uh, you won, of course, your skirmish over the document. Uh-huh. This is a victory celebration for all of us, since the decision I made will affect the future of my family. In fact, I was just about to propose a toast. You were about to propose a toast. Unless, since this is something that affects the entire family, you'd like your other grandson to join us? I'd be glad to extend your invitation to Rodney and his guest. Cord got it from the table. He turned around and smiled at me. He was really getting his kicks. And for an encore, he should have pulled the tablecloth out from under the dishes. Presto. Yeah, he's tough. No, Sandy, he's just proving a point. 
crudely. He's saying, see, Rodney, you see how Stephen has grown into a man. You see how, how well he brushes his hair and how nicely he eats his meal. And you, you're... Turning into a slob. I think you mean that. I do mean it. You're turning into a slob. Well, you're dating me, aren't you? Cut it out. Andy. Listen, it's my father in his room. I didn't see Mr. Harrington go out. Do you want to use the house phone? I'm going to go outside. I think I need some fresh air. Painting in the uh, cords over at the judge's house. I took a chance that they were going to stay there for a while. You know. I took a gamble on my job, honey, just to uh, come back and have the pleasure of touching you. Let me go. What are you doing here? I can go where I want to now. You don't belong here, sweetheart. Especially with Rodney. What I do and who I do it with is none of your business. Well, I'm making it my business. Somebody's got to set you straight, Sandy. That guy doesn't care anything about you. All he's interested in is kicks. I'm not through yet. Now, he probably thought it was a big joke taking you into the inn. Golden boy and the hash slinger from the cider barrel. Wise up, Sandy. All he wants you for is a couple of laughs. Are you through yet? I've got your best interest at heart. I don't want to see you get hurt, Sandy. Well, then leave me alone. I've got to get back to old man Payton. I was kind of hoping you'd throw that first punch, Rodney. Because now I owe you something, boy. And when I owe Golden Boy, I pay. This has been a wonderful evening, hasn't it? All we need now is to have a flat tire to make the evening complete. Jim. So? Get in the car. Why? Get in the car. Hey, Chandler. Well, you've really got a lot on your mind. Oh, that Chandler gives me the creeps. He's always hovering over Rachel like some sort of a vulture. I left her with, with Mr. Carson and my father. She's... Rachel Wells. That's right, Sandy. That's right. That's her name. You treat her like she was made out of thin ice, like she was going to melt away or crack or something. You're all over her like a cheap suit, and it makes me sick. Oh, boy, women. You and your no strings. What a, what a joke that was. No strings. Oh, boy. All right, well, I, I admit it. I wanted you, and I didn't care how I got the message across. But I did not figure that you would pull this on me, treat me like some kind of a wharf rat. Cut it out, Sandy. I mean it. Cut it out. Well, I can't help it. Look, nobody is putting you down but yourself. You know that? Please, let's not argue. I'm sorry, Ross.
Rodney not home? You're blocking the door. Give him up, Sandy. He's a loser. Why don't you go and haunt someone else's house? Hey, Lee. Don't give Sandy a hard time, huh? Ignore him, Charlie. Maybe he'll go away. Ignore me, Charlie. Do it in the back room, okay? Okay. I'll go in the back and make some yogurt. Only don't give her a hard time, okay? What do you want? What most people want. It's been a long day, Lee. Don't make it any longer, all right? Why, do, why don't you quit your job here? This, this place is a regular little sweat shack, Sandy. I like it. If only I could pick the customers. You know, I don't see any love at all here on the menu. So I think, I think I'll settle just for a cup of coffee. You know where it is. That sign up there says service. Service with a smile. So come on, smile, Sandy. Do you want to make some money? We're having a birthday party for Stephen Cord at Mr. Payton's house. And I figure just maybe I can get you in there as a waitress. Drop dead. <laughs> you know, it's $25 and all of Rodney Harrington that you can steal. Why don't you leave me alone? Because I love you and I don't want to see you get hooked on a loser. I don't care how pretty he is. I just left a loser, remember? Now, I've been winning all of the time lately. Because, you see, me and Mr. Payton, we're almost partners now. He wouldn't give you the time of day. He gave me a job and more. Oh, and what do you give him? Advice on the stock market? Service. A special service that, that nobody else can give. Like what? Well, keeping tab on people. Seeing what they do and, and who they do it with. Well, you finally made it. Congratulations, Lee. You're being paid to be a peeping Tom. That man has faith in me. He, he lets me in on things, you know? Like how Rodney's going lame and... And, and he's finished out of all of the money, you know? If, if he was a racehorse, Sandy, they'd have to shoot him. That guy's gonna... He's gonna spend the rest of his life down here on the, on the wharf. Oh, well, good. Then he'll be nice and close. You're going to get tired of beans and grease, baby. I mean, that's the kind of girl you are. No, I like beans, and you got me used to grease. Yeah, if I can hold tight just a while longer, Mr. Payton promised me that, well, he'd take care of me for the rest of my life. I know he's some kind of a weirdo, but I know I, I can handle him, and he's going to pay off. Sandy. Stick with a winner. I know you didn't have your heart in that, but I don't mind. Because I've got enough for both of us. Well, anyone I know? What do you mean, anyone you know? Well, the funeral you're going to. It's not a funeral. At least it's not meant to be. A wedding. No, no. Stephen Cord's birthday party. Up at the house? That's right. Oh, I thought you were on the outs with the folks up on the hill. Look, it wasn't my idea. Would you help me with this coffee? Oh, at your service, my lord. Thank you. I suppose all your old friends will be there. I doubt it. Betty will be there. Well, more than likely, she is Stephen's wife, you know. Mm, I noticed. Probably gonna be a boring old party. Yeah, probably. So, uh, why don't we just stay here? Why don't you just help me with the other cufflink? <sighs> Thank you. Forget it. Just seems sort of funny you're getting into a monkey suit to help Stephen Cord blow out his birthday candles. Who conned you into it? What makes you think anybody conned me into it? Oh, well, I know it wasn't your idea. Is the old man romancing you again? Sandy, it's a party. A, a family party, that's all. Yeah, I know, some family. 
I thought you walked away from all that, Rod. You were going to be the big swinger on the wharf. You were going to let the upright types play bumper cars without you. What's the matter? Did you get lonesome for your feather bed? What is it with you? Oh, nothing, nothing at all. It's just that uh, I dig you, that's all. And I don't like to see you under the old man's thumb. Well, thank you for the vote of confidence. Oh, Rod, don't be mad. I know it's none of my business. You got a point there. It's just that I wanted to be with you tonight. Sandy, there'll be other nights. Will there? With Mr. Payton running your life again, we haven't got a chance. Nobody's running my life. But me. Yeah, sure. Well, I'll see you around. Yeah, I'll see you around. Oh, I, uh, I don't know where I'm gonna be tonight. You might have to look around for me. He continues to live with him. She'll be trapped by his sick logic. She'll be destroyed, Rodney. That's the tragedy. Mr. Payton, what a nice surprise. Rod, you should have called and told me we were gonna have company. I would have brought an extra cider for our guests. But that's all right. She can have mine. Uh, no, thank you. Go ahead, I can share Rod's. Or would you prefer it in a cup? I'm really not thirsty, Mrs. Webber. Well, that's good, because I really don't know where I could even find one. I, I hope Rod has apologized to you for this terrible mess. It's really awful, honey. We should do something about it, especially if we're going to have such distinguished guests. I must be going. Don't let me run you off. No fear of that, Mrs. Weber. Goodbye, Rodney. Grandfather, wait a minute. Wait a second. Uh, let me walk you out. Don't bother. Get up, Sandy. Oh, are you ashamed to have your grandfather see us together? I'm one of the facts of your life, and you might as well get used to it. Not anymore. Not after that act you put on for his benefit, like you owned me. I was only joking. Well, you weren't joking. You were staking a claim, a claim you haven't got. Remember, no strings. That was our bargain. Well, if that's the way it has to be. No, it had to be that way. I never offered you any more or pretended I was going to. Never. You're saying it's over. It has to be. Oh, can I help it if I fell in love with you? There's no future in your loving me, Sandy. Well, even if I'm willing to go back to our bargain? You wouldn't stick to it. Let's be honest with each other. Honest? Like, why should you settle for low-class trash like Sandy Weber when you can have high-class trash like Betty Cord? Is that honest enough for you? At the same time, across town, high on the hill, Lee Weber's wife, Sandy, shows up as ordered at the home of Martin Payton. If you're looking for your husband, he's been dismissed for the night. Mr. Payton is waiting for you upstairs. Surprise! Come in! Mrs. Weber to see you, sir. Thank you, Mary, and good night. For a few more months. It must be tiresome waiting for the final papers. I haven't been bored. Sit down, please. I won't be staying that long. Why have you come here? Because I didn't have to. But you were curious. If you have a point, make it. <laughs> I can see why Rodney finds you interesting. Oh, I knew you had a point. You have a certain gutter courage that probably was quite fascinating while it lasted. Do you read tea leaves, too? Oh, Rodney isn't that complicated. As a matter of fact, he's rather conventional. Much too conventional for a girl like you. Well, why don't we let Rod decide that? Hasn't he? 
I'll catch the rest of your act later. What do you want from my grandson? Oh, a smile and a kind word. Indifference? Neglect? Disgust? No, no, Mrs. Weber. You deserve better than that. You'll find it. Someplace else. Rodney's like a little boy who's never been allowed to get dirty. So the moment his mother's back is turned, he plunges into the nearest mud hole. But now the novelty has worn thin. He wants to get back to the things he left. <laughs> the things he's had all his life. But he, he can't find them on the wharf. Nor in the garage. Nor with you. Did he put you up to this? You had your dance, Mrs. Webber. It's time for you to leave the party. Oh, good. That's yours. Services rendered? For understanding my position. Oh, I, I understand your position. A uh, place for everything and everything in its place, including the pretty little valentine that your grandson played patty cake with. Don't be too harsh on yourself. You expect me to take that and shove it in my purse and go bowing out? Bow out gracefully, Mrs. Weber, but bow out tonight. You think that's what I've been waiting for ever since I started going with Rob? The payoff at the end of the rainbow. Well, I never asked him for a thing. Then you're a fool. Nothing is free in life, especially love. That's all you're going to get out of your relationship with Rodney. How much? Two thousand dollars. Is that all Rod's worth to you? That's all you're worth to me. And don't haggle. Okay. You think I'm a real waterfront type? Well, what does that make Rod? You just flew two G's, mister. If you want to clear the tracks for your precious grandson, you should be using this to grease Betty's way out of town. You'll leave tonight. She's the one that's going to foul up your plans. If you don't leave, the police will be notified that you stole that money. Do you hear me? She's still got it for Rod. She's not going to let him off the hook, and I don't think he wants off. I want you out of this town tonight. Sweat, old man! <laughs> Pot roast. I hear it's very good. Uh, why didn't you join us? Oh, I didn't think you'd ever ask. That's a lovely suit you have on, Betty. Thank you. <sighs> well, here we all are. What is it, Sandy? Oh, let's see. I know I had a reason when I got into the car. Now, what could it be? Could it be that you're two of my most favorite people? <laughs> no, uh, that couldn't be it. How was your visit with Martin Payton, Sandy? That's it. You saw Mr. Payton? I want you to give Rod a message for me. I've been looking all over town for him, but he seems to have disappeared. I'm sure you'll see him before I do. No, not anymore. I've uh, got a plane to catch. California, here I come. So he's all yours, honey. But you better enjoy him while he lasts. Sandy, now, what I... What does this have to do with my grandfather? Oh, uh, just tell him so long, and uh, thanks for the ride on the merry-go-round. Stephen, I want to leave. In a minute. You're rocking the boat. My grandfather is forcing you to leave? <laughs> You're next on his list. Now, what is that supposed to mean? Are you going to sit here and listen to all this trash? I haven't got anything better to do. I, uh... I got in the way of your granddaddy's plans for Rodney. So he gave me my walking papers, all wrapped up in $2,000. Plain enough? He bought you off? Except, uh, he got me mad doing it, so I threw it in his face. <laughs> Dumb can you get? If I had any style at all, I'd go back and ask him for it. What plans? Oh, big plans for Big Rodney. A nice new wife. 
Oh, tough luck, honey. But if you play your cards right, you can walk off with a bundle. How's that? Well, I, uh, I put in a few good words for you. I told Mr. Payton how you and Rod still have this thing going for each other and how you keep bumping into one another and taking your time saying excuse me. Oh, don't worry, he got the message. As soon as he's finished picking up his money, I'm sure he'll be knocking on your door. But hold out for a fistful, because I'm sure you're worth it. Oh, my. How time flies when you're having a wonderful time. Well, we'll miss you, Sandy. Oh, well, I couldn't leave without saying goodbye. Oh, and as soon as you see Rod, be sure and give him my message. Well, ciao, adios, and all that. Thank <laughs> you.